Hi, my name is Henry Vernov. I'm a product manager for Healthcare Vertical at Citrix. Hi, I'm Michelle Leefleur. I am the Vice President for Health Information Technology Services and the CIO here at Hamilton Health Sciences. Michelle, healthcare IT is always an exciting place to be at. What are the key opportunities and challenges that Hamilton Health is facing in the current environment? Um, you know, in IT, in healthcare, uh, challenges in the organization are actually opportunities for the digital and IT teams and the technology teams. We take um, challenge and determine how we can best support um, our organization through those challenges. Uh, our organization, like many others, has does have some significant challenges, though, still coming out of COVID. Um, human health, human resources are uh, significantly um, short. There are shortages in every lane. Uh, many think of that just as being shortages in nursing or other of the clinical roles. But we've also seen that in IT professional services um, coming out of COVID, where people have the opportunity to look more broadly for career opportunities while people can work remotely. So it's providing a, a challenge also in the IT space, in addition to everything across the organization, which is key in providing care when you're short of providers. Uh, no surprise, but uh, in Canadian healthcare, budgets for healthcare have always been challenging. Uh, and uh, that definitely has continued across the sector and been amplified out of COVID. Um, uh, in terms of how we can leverage our uh, our short operating and capital budgets. So significant constraints uh, that we have continued to face for the 30 years, actually, that I've been in healthcare. So some of these aren't new, but they've certainly been exacerbated coming out of COVID. Um, no, there is uh, f amazing teams providing patient care across the organization. So how do we, in the face of those shortages, What's the opportunity to help them uh, use technology to be more efficient and be able to uh, take on the greater volumes of things that they have to deal with? So while there are challenges, the, the two large ones being budget and resource shortages, those are great opportunities uh, for my teams uh, to support with all of the amazing things that are coming out technology-wise with such rapid pace. Obviously, some of those will be addressed by AI opportunities and um, uh, so while we're challenged, we take those as opportunity and, and ways to look forward. Are you seeing those same types of challenges, Henry, in other healthcare organizations or other sectors that Citrix works with? Yeah, so definitely rising costs and declining reimbursements is definitely a pretty common challenge that organizations facing, including labor shortages you mentioned. In addition to those, we see a lot of mergers and acquisitions are happening across the healthcare sector. In fact, I believe I, I've seen a recent statistic that last year there was over 60 mergers that happened within the United States, and I believe over 20 happened due to the financial stress. So ability, uh, customers are coming in and, and asking how we can help them, whether on board new organizations or divest you know, their organizations that they just that the, the, they are working through with. So definitely that's been a challenge. And again, Cybersecurity has been a constant, no matter who you speak with, whether it's healthcare or not. I mean, yes, uh, healthcare patient records are very valuable uh, valuable uh, on the black market. So there's a lot of kind of the threat actors that are trying to go after the data, and uh, and they are using more advanced capabilities. Not only do healthcare systems try to enhance their uh, their breadth of technology, but criminals do the same thing. So definitely organizations are forced to use innovative ways and unique ways to fight off uh, criminals uh, to defend uh, patient data and to continue provide patient uninterrupted patient care. I'm glad you uh, identified cyber it is definitely, um, I didn't put it in the challenge or opportunity category, but it is I would think that every CIO in every industry, to be frank, is uh, it is the thing that probably keeps you up at night. Um, very fortunate to have a really fabulous uh, security team here and a CISO who um, uh, does great work. And technology in that field is advancing to bring other things to bear. But it is it is something I wish that we didn't have to think about and we could be focusing on some of the other uh, opportunities, but um, most certainly 
the bad actors, as you said, are quite active. And although healthcare used to be, people used to think it was a safety zone that they um, might not uh, uh, consider an active area to have an event with. That certainly has gone to the wayside over the last few years. And we've seen a number of major cyber events in Ontario, not far from our own organization here, as well as globally. So that is will continue to be uh, an area for concern for all of us. Yeah. So also, Michelle, just curious. So previously, or going back a couple of years, everybody, or at least there was a big effort to develop business continuity plans and everybody kind of expected, hey, you know what? There might be an outage here and there. We might be down for a couple of hours, maybe a day, and they developed procedures to kind of support that scenario. Now, lately, you hear that some customers are impacted a week, two weeks, and some over a month. What is what is your organization? Maybe what do you hear from your peers on what they're doing within their organization to develop more long-term outage plans to to continue providing patient care and services for 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 patients? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, Henry, and it's challenging. And um, uh, I think ourselves at Hamilton Health Science, like our peers, in the past around technology, have looked at business continuity really about returning to operations with systems because we had the expectation that our outages would not be significantly long, but we've seen people out for months now. So now as we're doing business, we are continuously trying to evolve our business continuity plan. It is no longer good enough to do one, put it in the drawer and assume that we're all going to be ready. So a couple of things that we're doing and when I talk to my colleagues, they are doing as well. Um, tabletop exercises and things are far more frequent uh, not only within the technology teams, but with operations. I, th I think the technology teams um, may be in some ways better prepared to bring systems back up. But at the end of the day, the more important question in a, in a downtime event is, to your point, what do you do about providing care? What do you do if you're, if you're out for weeks and your, your radiation therapy machines don't work for oncology? In the end, that's not necessarily an IT uh, issue to solve, although we will work to bring systems back. But what is the more strategic regional care planning that's going on for business continuity to say in these events, which are not never events in all likelihood, if we're planning them as they may and will likely occur sometime, our conversations are much broader now with operations. What do we learn from other people's events? Unfortunately, we we learn that way and we see the the pain that some of our colleagues have gone through. And what are our operational leaders doing? So we we continue to work with, like our our cancer VPs and others to say, okay, this is this is the system side of it, but what is the operational side of it in terms of patient care? Um, and unfortunately, with a couple of very large events in in different parts of the Ontario province, um, as I said, we've learned from our colleagues, and more regional planning is occurring around how to sustain services. Uh, that's to me the harder and more challenging piece that people need to be fully ready for versus just bringing up the servers again and getting access to information. It's how do you how do you continue to provide care for those patients that can't wait months or are, are in active treatment and they need something tomorrow. So um, it's, a ch it's a challenge, but there's a lot of collaboration going on now, not only in the sci IT cyber world, but operational planning for any type of event, whether it's a cyber event or a massive power network loss, what have you. So collaboration, which really came out of COVID, is uh, an amazing thing to watch across different regions and different partners who might have been more competitive with each other before and now realize that we need to work together. So again, we spoke about more of an IT and operational side, but also in the healthcare system, you find multiple uh, or the people of different generations that provide uh, patient care, clinicians, different ages, different kind of uh, desires, uh, different ways they like to work. So in a, how do you address or how do you the approach kind of going to patient care without technology, using paper? Like how do you kind of train and onboard clinicians who have might have never have an, even, even had an experience of providing patient care without being next to an EHR platform or other supporting tools that provide them guidance, provide guardrails to subscribe to proper uh, medication. How do you approach that? 
I'm smiling because it's a very interesting question. We've actually experienced that here in a small outage that we had uh, somewhere around a year ago. Our residents, as you said, are the youngsters that are coming out of medical school or nursing school or speech therapy are um, oh, pen and paper is foreign to them. I, re I remember when we had this small incident, people said, you, you want me to do what? <laughs> Can I, can you give me a pen? Like, how would, how do we do that? So it, we, we learned a lot in that moment too, that they're not, people aren't trained that way anymore. So, um, I, I think our, our approach to it was just diligence in terms of call it, we pull together site IMS command centers that are operationally led with IT support with extremely strong medical leadership that's prepared to provide uh, that level of oversight and guidance and uh, a secure place for young students who haven't had to work in that type of environment uh, before. And really, at the end of the day, I'm not going to say there's any magic to it other than creating an environment where teams pull together and are supporting each other to make sure that whatever their comfort is with pen, paper, and or electronic tools that uh, it's being done from a, a place of support to get through um, providing care for our patients. So, but it was interesting. I am, uh, the smile was real. I remember when they said, what do I do with that? <laughs> well, we have to write orders and we have to try to write them legibly and uh, we'll get together, uh, get through it as a team. But um, uh, who would have thought actually? Yeah, but I'm sure again, it even if the case comes to using paper, I'm sure the challenge of backporting all the data from paper to the EHR or another application, that's, that must be a challenge. So although we, we hope we, the healthcare system never goes through that event, everybody has to be ready and willing to stand up and, and bring the system back up when, when, when the requirement is there. Yeah, you know, you're bang on. You can't have an EHR that has big gaps in it after you go, after you come back to life. So, uh, significant resource impacts to try to to make the right decisions around what information needs to get into the EHR and what um, as discrete data and what can stay in some sort of scanned format. So it's a, it's complicated. Like technology is amazing, uh, but and we become very reliant on it very quickly as as we found here and in my other lives when you when you put up an EHR, there's lots of p growing pains to go through and challenges and resistance and then the Opposite happens if you have an outage. People are like, well, we need it back immediately because now I'm so blind on it. So um, there's good with it, but there's also a lot of planning and impact when it's not available. <laughs>